Hey everyone, welcome to my channel. This is Devin Loretz. Today we're gonna to be talking about RAW versus JPEG images. I get this question a lot. What file format should I be shooting in? Let's jump in, we'll take a look at some pros and cons. All right, before we get started, let's break down what is a RAW and JPEG image. The JPEG images are gonna be most popular, oftentimes shot on smartphones and cameras. These are gonna be compressed or processed images that are much smaller in size. On the other hand, a raw photo is gonna be uncompressed, a lot of raw data that'll give you a lot of flexibility later on for editing, changing things such as your exposure, white balance, even sharpness and noise reduction. Let's take a look. With any decision, you always wanna weigh the pros and cons. With shooting JPEG, some of the pros are these images are much smaller, as we already mentioned, these are already compressed images. The benefit there, you can shoot more photos on your memory card, and you can store more photos on your computer or external hard drive. At the same time, every camera has something called a camera buffer, the number of images that could be shot before the camera needs to stop to catch up to you. My Sony a7R 3 can shoot around 76 JPEG images, as opposed to about 28 uncompressed raw photos. So this is extremely important if you're shooting something like sports, family, or any type of fast action where you don't wanna wait for the camera. At the same time, JPEG images give you that quick turnaround time if you're uploading to the web or need something for a slideshow or other type of client work. However, the cons with shooting JPEGs, as we've already talked about, these images are already processed. So you don't have as much flexibility when you're editing your JPEG later. So what are some examples of why or when you would like to shoot JPEG images? Let's say, as we've talked about, if you are shooting something like sports or family photos, those JPEG images may be really important because you need a higher camera buffer. You need to shoot more shots without waiting for the camera. At the same time, photojournalism may be a field where you need to shoot quickly, so JPEGs may be your preferred option and at the same time, you need the speed for editing and getting those photos out to newspapers, magazines, and other publications. When we start talking about flexibility with editing, this is where raw images comes in. The raw image is gonna be unprocessed and uncompressed, so you're gonna have the most amount of detail. Because this is an unprocessed image, it does require a raw processor. I personally use Adobe Lightroom to process my raw images. Many people like to use Adobe Camera Raw built into Photoshop. And there are other free applications available that you can also use to process your images. Of course, we need to consider the pros and cons with shooting raw images as well. On the pro side, we're gonna have a lot more detail, so this will allow us a lot of flexibility when we go back and edit our images. We've talked about in the last video about under and overexposed photos. So if you shoot in some very tricky lighting environments or places where the light's often changing, the raw image will let you easily bring up the exposure or bring down the exposure in your image. At the same time, white balance is something extremely important and you have a lot of control with your raw images. Many cameras have an auto white balance setting to set natural colors. However, it may not always get it correct. So your raw image will let you easily change that later. When you first start shooting raw images, you might be a little bit confused. You might say, hey, these raw images don't look as clear compared to my JPEGs. That's because raw images apply no sharpening out of the camera. You have full ability to apply your own sharpening to taste. And if you shoot in low light environments or dimly lit areas, you're gonna shoot at a higher ISO. Your raw images will let you apply noise reduction by yourself. There are cons with shooting raw images. We've already talked about the large sizes of these raw files. Sometimes upwards of 50, 60 megabytes or more per file. So you're gonna have less photos per memory card. And at the same time, you do need to invest in more external storage on your computer. We've already talked about the buffer as well. With shooting raw images, like I mentioned on my Sony, I can only shoot around 28 uncompressed raw photos, as opposed to about 76 JPEGs. So this will be really important if you are shooting something fast or quick action, you may need to shoot JPEG instead of raw, unless you have the ability to wait. Talking about raw images, a great example of when you may wanna shoot raw is if you're gonna be shooting landscapes. You want the most amount of detail captured as possible, and you wanna have the ability to edit that later on your computer. And if you are shooting in tricky lighting environments, or even if you're on a vacation, traveling with your family, oftentimes light will change, so you want that flexibility later to be able to edit your photos to get the most out of your camera. 
when you shoot in RAW, you're gonna have a larger range of values from your highlights to your shadows. This will be extremely important if you're shooting something and you need to bring back some detail. Oftentimes in the shadows, you can brighten up those areas with a RAW image without losing quality. If you do this on a JPEG, you'll start to notice some degradation in the photo, which may not be so pleasing to the eye or your clients. All right, so in conclusion, we've talked about RAW versus JPEG images. Which file format will you choose? Honestly, it comes down to yourself. What do you plan on shooting? And what are these photos gonna be used for? In the end, I shoot about 99% of my photos in RAW because I have a lot of hard drive space, but I really wanna get the most detail out of my camera. Thanks everyone for watching my second Camera Basics video. My name is Devin Loretz. Please join me on Instagram. Subscribe down below and hit that bell to be notified of future videos. Thanks, have a great day.